is only war. Oh, I need more coffee. All right, what's up, gents? 40 Gate Dirtbacks here. We got a awesome three-part video for you guys for a tournament that we just played in RTT. It was about a 18 to 20 man tournament, uh, alternate universes in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. They do it once a month. Great turnout uh, with the new terrain setup that we have. Awesome players. Every game I had was super fun. Uh, and we actually were able to put essentially a fully painted army on the table, which I will talk about why it looks like crayons <laughs> in a little bit. Uh, but there's a lot to go over in the video. So we're going to do a three part series. First part is going to go over a uh, thousand suns. Second part is going to go over sorry, a thousand suns. And then the final game is going to be at the top table against Space Wolves, which I'm going to be so excited to talk about because it was one of my most closest games I've had with this specific list. Uh, so that's going to be in the, in the third part. So the first part we're going to go over is Thousand Suns versus uh, Curse Cultists, basically Chaos Space Marines with a Curse Cultist everywhere. Uh, and then we're going to go over the other two videos in the next uh, upcoming days. So if you guys are uh, Patreons, appreciate you guys. Thanks for supporting the channel. We are investing into uh, lights now down in the uh, Battle Bunker. So we have really good uh, spotlights up on us. So you guys get uh, some better picture quality uh, down there. And also if you guys are competitive or grandmasters, make sure you're taking advantage of message me one-on-one on discord. So you guys get the full, you know, coaching and, and going over lists, tactics, all that stuff. If you guys are interested in that, head over to Patreon. If you guys want to just support the channel and be awesome uh, 40k nation dirtbags, you guys can do that as well and you get first access to these videos up on Patreon. And then you get access to the Patreon Discord link, uh, which nobody else can, can view but Patreons. So appreciate you guys. Let's get into the video and we'll first go over the list and then we'll go over uh, the game against Thousand Suns. All right, so first off the list, uh, it's... If you guys have seen any of my other Curse Cults videos, it's basically the same list. So I'm going to not go full in depth because I actually have a whole in-depth guide on those other two videos, which we'll, we'll try and post it uh, or just go Curse Cults is on my channel and you'll see it. So we're going to go through uh, basically the list and what I specifically had him, have him doing. So first off, we have Abaddon, obviously, because we are using him in this specific list for the 4-up invuln save, because everything within 6 inches has a 4-up invuln save. Curse Cultists are just super tanky and super annoying to deal with. Uh, then we have Dark Communes, three of them. Two of them are undivided. One is Nurgle. The Nurgle is basically the one starting on the table, so that way, if I need to do uh, actions with them turn one, they're not going to be shot off the table turn one by a lot of uh, you know guns on the other side of the table. Spend one CP strat, uh, so that way they can't be shot outside 12. Then we have a Cultist Blob. Cultist Blob, uh, they're going to make op objectives sticky, and they just block out the backfield for me. So we have two 10-man units, both Nurgle, same, same exact strat. Uh, five Legionnaires. Why are we bring Legionnaires is because... Uh, uh, dark dark packs get to reroll because of the icon so when uh, abaddon does his two up uh cp and if he fails the dark path you basically just roll it again and then try and get the, the cp so uh that's why i like him and also to get full rerolls to wound with abaddon if somebody's on an objective so if he commits and then he charges something he gets full rerolls to fucking hit uh with his devastating wounds uh on his uh weapon so that's why i like the legionnaires it's basically just 10 extra wounds for somebody to go through to get to abby uh then we have three units of cursed cultists two are undivided one is nurgle like i said before uh bikes really good should be in almost every chaos space marine player list i have nurgle uh because they get exploding fives and they can't be shot outside 12 inches, same exact strat. One with the plasma pistol, two with plasma guns. So you have five shots coming in from the side table edge uh, within 12 inches and uh, exploding on fives. So you'd be surprised how many Marines they can kill coming in from the side table edge. And they block out really far with their really wide bases. Two Forge Fiends, both Nurgle. Uh, you could do a, a, a Undivided on one of them if you really wanted to. Um, I just kind of, I, I don't know. I guess I save my CP mainly for grenades, um, the Nurgle strat, and like the full rerolls to hit and wound in, in combat. So that's really what I save my CP for. But I could test out undivided on one of these with um, auto cannons or whatever with the the fortune. I might test that out next game just to kind of see what it is. But we have two ectoplasma. They're just really good at killing tanks. Uh, terminators anything with three wounds and two up saves like they're just really good at doing that so that's kind of why, why i like the ectoplasmas um 
over the other ones because that's specifically what I'm using them for. Then we have three units of three Nurglings. They're there really for the minus one to hit aura within six inches and they do actions. So they're really good at screening out, blocking out uh, charges and doing actions and the minus one to hit. Then we have Seekers, that's our secret tech. Uh, I talk about them a lot because they are really good and really annoying to deal with. There are five models with big bases, wide, like long bases, so you can block out an entire army on turn one, which you'll see. Uh, and then Sio, we're testing out still 120 points, but it comes back up on a two plus with nine wounds, toughness six. Uh, pretty good at killing Eldar with the 2d6 flamer shots. So that's really why you put them in here is for, you know, Overwatch, flamer, and like kind of certain matchups. And it's just really hard to deal with because if they actually do manage to kill him, he just gets back up on a two plus and then can move up and, and go do actions. He can also advance and do actions because of his, his assault. Uh, range weapon. So that's uh, that's why we're, we're testing out Sile. So that's the list again. Sorry, it's pretty quick, but uh, we did a whole breakdown of it. My last couple videos with a curse cultist. So go check that out if you want me to explain really in depth of every single unit and what they do. So let's get into the pictures, uh, and I get to show off my crayon uh, paint job. Here we go. So let me make myself smaller for you, gents. All right. So this is, this is my desk. Uh, I work from home and I took a picture just to show off that we actually got most of the colors done. The Forge Fiends, I really liked just the Night Lord's, um, you know, color scheme. Uh, we did make these green, uh, not a really good glow effect. I do have to redo it. This isn't the glow effect, but what they look like is, is kind of bad. Uh, then we have the three different uh, dark commune units, yellow, red, and green. Um, and then we have all of our Chris Coltis, the Forge Fiend I just painted because I, I had the colors out. And then we have our style, which is painted as well. So, and then this is, <laughs> they look a lot better now because I did put more colors on them, but we have our Seekers. Uh, we have the Red Squad, we have the Yellow Squad, and we have the Green Squad. And then we painted all the Nerglings, uh, one purple, one blue, one green. So everything's color coded. Uh, so there's no confusion of what unit belongs to what unit. Uh, then we have our cultists as well. So I was super happy that I actually got all of them done. This is what it looks like after some of the, the highlighting. So we have the skin painted on some of these guys. We have the horns and the tongues on the nurglings and the eyes. We have the three different colors on the seekers. Sile is painted a little bit more detailed. Um, yeah, so basically I'm still working on painting all these before LVO, but they are going to look pretty fucking sick. If I do say myself, do say so myself because I am not a painter. So this is the this is the setup. Uh, this is going to be uh, the setup for all three games. This is also Universe's layout. We are working on more terrain with more rectangles. Uh, these are just Games Workshop layout. We have um, rectangles. We might turn these into rectangles, but for now they they do their job uh, for line of sight blocking. And then these forests are also ruins so all of the ruins are basically either squares or rectangles everything is basically WYSIWYG line of sight blocking um and yeah i like it. it it provides a lot of cover it's a death pit in the center and there's still shooting lanes i think this one could be backed up a little bit so you get a little fire lane going this way so basically you have an x for the shooting lanes uh and then a lot of line of sight blocking if you do have a melee army coming into the center so i i i like it uh, this is beautifully painted Sean's uh, list. Me and Sean haven't played in a while, but he's been running Thousand Suns for a couple months now. Uh, and his paint job is just amazing. So he's got a bunch of Rubik Marines with all of the um, leaders. I think uh, a 10 man of Flamers, a 10 man of Regular, and then one, two, five mans. He's got the Hellbrute with the uh, the plasma cannon, not the last cannon. Obviously, he's got Magnus, which is just a bully. Uh, we have this Beast, which provides longer range for spells and stuff. And then we have Aramon, a bunch of guys on discs. And uh, this guy can teleport once per game and do you know actions, all the stuff. So if anybody sees this guy, like if he sees one of my units, I think everything that shoots that unit it gets out of line of sight shooting. So for me, I lucked out because most of my stuff's Nurgle. So if he is trying to go after a specific unit, I can just Nurgle strap them so they can't be shot outside 12 inches. So I had a little bit of a counter to this, but that's very fucking scary because most people don't have that uh, tactic, but that's a pretty cool tactic that he's using for that guy. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was his list. This is our, again, amazing, amazing paint job. 
really, really good. And there's no dry brush. It's all, it's all freehand. So this is a setup. We played, uh, the first mission where you, um, it's, it's diagonal. It's really weird diagonal deployment. It's this one where you're, I think 22 inches up and then all the way to the corner. So it's really weird, uh, deployment. And then you get to set up the, uh, the objectives. So this is basically after, yeah, so this is because we, we deployed wrong and then Jack came over and said, Hey, you have to deploy this way. So we're like, ah, oh, fuck. So let's redo it. So we basically, uh, deployed, I, I, I won first. So I, I, I put the objective down here first, or I'm sorry, I put one down here first. He then matched me and put one down over there. I then put one down here and then he matched me and put one down there and then my third one i just put down right there and then we rolled off to see what side we got i won the roll off so then i was able to take my side uh that's the advantage and disadvantage of, of placing your own objectives is if if you put too many on one side and then you lose the roll off the other opponent will get that side so if you're safe and you just put kind of one directly in the center you could do it that way so that way both sides uh get equal playing field and also for me, I wanted a mosh pit in the center because I have so many bodies that no matter where we put the third objective, most of my Chris Colts is just going to try and sit on those objectives and just be annoying the entire game. So this is our deployment. He basically castled up everything behind the walls on this side of the table. Uh, Magnus, the forge thing, the Hellbrute, all of the guys, all of the characters, and the flamers are right outside there. I forgot that the flamers can move, move again, and then shoot. Uh, which is super far range. So I, the the unit of flamers probably would have killed my Chris Cultus if I didn't go first. So that was that was my mistake for the setup because these guys that are right here probably would have died. Potentially, I'm not sure if he would have got all of the line of sight on there. But basically, these guys would have you know advanced up six plus d six, and then they get to move six again. So you probably could have like 18 inches from there to there, and then get all line of sight onto these guys. Probably would have killed the whole unit. Cause they don't have the four pin vault safe because Abaddon because I don't get it unless it's my command phase. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably where I, where I fucked up turn one was I deployed too aggressively uh, against his flamers that can come all the way across the board and just flamer somebody. So what we did was we deployed our seekers always on the line. So that way, if I don't go first, I can uh, scout move back uh, behind this cover or this way behind this cover. Uh, and if I do go first, I can scout move up and then kind of just block out his uh, deployment. And then my other guys were over here just so they could do the same thing. So they can move up and block out the uh, deployment. Or if I have like aerial denial, try to be in the center, I can do that. And then everything else is back here. So I have one Chris Coltis in reserves uh, to rapid ingress. I have the Nurglings, other unit Nurglings in reserves, one's up top here. I did a deployment video. If you guys want to check that out, it's really good. Uh, setting up for turn one secondaries. And then we have our, our cultists over here to our cultists are on both of these objectives. So that way I can try and do, um, uh, I don't think I can start on this one. Yeah. So basically I can do a uh, sticky on both objectives turn one. So if I'm on both objectives, I get at least sticky on both these turn one, and then they can kind of move back and block at the backfield and the bikes are all the way in the back one forge fiend over here. So that way I have line of sight to whatever comes in on this, objective over here. So if I move up eight, I can shoot whatever lands over here if needed. Um, and then the Nurglings are kind of just chilling out over here to basically get me investigate signals. So pretty simple, just deployment, uh, turn one, we get first. So obviously we get the hard one, which is behind enemy lines and capture enemy outpost. So I'm not getting capture enemy outpost. Cause if you see his, his guys, I'm not taking that over. That's just, it's not happening. So uh, we kind of ignore that one and then we go for behind enemy lines. So again, the seekers are so good for this just because they can get really far across the table. I have to basically make the charge. So the, the Nurglings scooch up five and then they charge this uh, flamer unit right here, which is a 10 man. Uh, and then the seekers do exactly the same thing. So they move up 14 after the scout move nine and then they charge. So basically I have to get, this is a deployment zone. This guy right here basically has to die. So when he fights back, this guy is going to be the first one to die because I need behind enemy lines. So as long as one of my guys live and one Nurgling lives, I'll be able to have two models, two units behind enemy lines, turn one. And, uh, they only have a five up in vault and save, so they're probably going to die. So we were able to tie up most of the shit here. He doesn't have obviously enough CP to counter charge, but Magnus is tied up. Uh, Magnus is one inch away, so I don't get in, him into combat. We tie up this 10 man unit, this 10 man unit, and the Nurglings basically scooch up to get minus one to hit uh, in front of everybody. So 
After he fights back, we have one Nurgling alive on three wounds, and then we have three of the Seekers alive over here. So we still have this unit tied up. We have this unit tied up. Um, so yeah, we did really good turn one tying up him in his deployment zone and not being able to fall back and shoot and do all that stuff. So that was a really, really good turn one for us. We didn't get our second secondary, but we were able to tie, up, tie him up, which is our whole goal of the Seekers. So that's why I love Seekers so fucking much. He gets Overwhelming Force. Whoops, I didn't mean to edit it. So he gets Overwhelming Force and Investigate Signal. So each time an enemy unit started to turn in range of objective markers, so I was not in range of any objective markers over here or over there. So I didn't, he wasn't able to get that one. And then Investigate Signals, he has to try and do that in the corners. So he basically investigates um, one unit back here, which is holy with a nine. Uh, and then I don't know, I don't think he sacrificed anybody in this corner. No, so he only does it in one corner. So basically he gets investigate uh, signals in this back corner and then he isn't able to kill anybody on my objectives because I'm just too far away from him and stuff like that. So Magnus scooches up behind this uh, wall over here to try and be really hard for my forge fiends to shoot at him. Uh, these guys finish off the seekers. Uh, these guys finish off the Nurglings. And then he brings out uh, Aramon all the way over here and then the other character over here to try and get 36 inch range from the, the beast. So 36 inch range to try and shoot uh, my Accursed Cultist down here. And then this Plasma Cannon shoots the Accursed Cultist as well. And then everything else kind of just scoot it up and waited for me to see what I do on my turn. So that was it. Uh, on my turn two, I get Assassinate and aerial denial so both pretty easy for me to focus on so he gave me two characters it might have been one character so he might have given me one or two characters over here aramon if i can kill him as soon as possible that's what i'm trying to go for so aramon's only in a five-man unit so basically i'm just going to line up my four trains and just try and blast this unit off the table uh, and then i need something else to counter if i can't shoot him to death so that's when I bring down Sile on the other side of this ruin over here. So that way, hopefully he can make us a nine inch charge. I mean, it's, it's, it's up in the air. I'm probably not gonna make it, but it's just in case. So I reserve my Forge Fiend over here in the top. Oh, this is the green. So reserve my Forge Fiend in the top to get line of sight onto this unit. And again, if you just measure from the character, you they can't remove the character first. So even if he moves all of these guys, I'll still be able to be in line of sight of the character to shoot the character still. So that's what that's what you should do anytime you line up like charges or shooting. So this Forge Fiend basically lined up line of sight to this character, and then this Forge Fiend lined up line of sight to this character. So we have two Forge Fiends going straight into that unit. We spend our uh, once per game advance and charge on the Nurglings over here, so that way they're able to advance up and charge, and again, block out the Flamers on the other side of the wall so they can't overwatch me, and I just keep them fucking tied up the rest of the game. That's the goal, That was that was the intent. Nurglings deep struck in the center to get me aerial denial. Uh, that's the center, so we're wholly within six inches with the Nurglings. And then these guys basically just advanced up to wait to see what he does on this side of the table. So they advanced up, they're within six inches of Abaddon. These guys are within six inches of Abaddon. I chained out this guy to be within six inches of Abaddon, so this whole unit that's advancing forward gets a four up invuln safe. So we got like tentacles coming out. Uh, from Abaddon so that way the entire army basically gets a four up in bone save. So what do we do? We basically finished off that unit up top to get us assassinate um, with our mount. So we killed our mount, the, the unit. We have the, the Hellbrute still there. These guys made the charge. They consolidated and just kind of tagged both these units. So we have this unit tagged of uh, I think a 10 man and then this other 10 man tagged and then our fucking <laughs> our big guys just do so much damage uh, with their AP one two damage uh, attacks. So I think I I think he failed like eighteen wounds or whatever, and he's starting to move like his guys. I'm like I'm sorry, Sean. They're they're two damage each, and he's like, really? And I was like, yeah. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> so then he just removes the entire squad with the character, um, with the the big accursed cultist unit so it was just it was a lot of dice coming in plus one to hit plus one to wound so hitting on threes wounding on twos it was just it was it was a slaughterhouse so after that turn he then tries to come back a little bit he brings out his beast um this guy comes out to try and finish off my style on the other side of uh, this wall here 
this character uh, speeds up uh, on his disc over here. Uh, Magnus comes out to play. These guys move on the other side of the wall over here. They fall back from uh, this unit. And these guys rapid ingress in this corner because I need to try and take over his objective in case I have any secondaries that I need to either take over an objective, kill models on an objective, uh, or steal his home field uh, thing, which obviously I couldn't do because that was turn one. So basically he brought most of his army out over here. So we rapid ingressed our big ass unit, which is undivided over here to stay out of line of sight of everybody so he can't shoot me. So that was such a good play right here. So next turn, I just advance and charge and finish off the rest of this unit over here. Magnus uh, trying to peel off this green unit. So he puts a lot of shots into this green unit, takes me down to just one Accursed Cultist with the Dark Commune. Um, and that's it. So basically the Accursed Cultists run away from Magnus to get back on this objective. And I start making small Accursed Cultists back uh, every turn to try and reduce or bring my numbers back he charges the beast and the helper into my sile kill sile on a two plus he gets back up it got back up so it got placed outside of one inch of uh engaging range and then the red squad is waiting to fucking charge these two guys and do something uh next turn so that was his turn we get attempting target and defend stronghold so he has to choose between this target this target and this target so obviously I think he chose, I mean, it was just, I'm gonna get it. So he, he chose this target just to kind of make me get, come get it. So I advanced, got pretty close to him. And then I only had like a two inch charge for these guys. We did our once per game advance and charge, plus one hit, plus one to wound. Uh, we saved our CP so we can get full rerolls to hit, full rerolls to wound uh, on this unit. These guys scooted up to try and just be annoying. Uh, against Magnus. I know he doesn't suffer the minus one because he's a monster, but I want to get into this unit so they suffer the minus one to hit into our Curse Cultists. These Curse Cultists advance in charge so I can get the charge off the big guys onto the monster, the, all the other guys onto the help route. The bikes came on up the, up the top here to try and shoot the uh, help route with the plasmas, and then this plasma moved up to try and shoot, I think, these guys back here that were still on his objective. So 36 inch range, and then we just kind of killed these guys in, in the back table here. The other Forge Fiend died finally to, um, I think I did six wounds to myself. And then when he moved up to do his, uh, I think it was turn two. Yeah, he moved up and then blasted me with the with the mortal wound shot and uh, did six six mortal wounds to it. So it just died. I killed. I did six wounds to myself and then he did six more wounds and it blew up. It didn't blow up. It just it just died. Uh, and then the cultists move up, get as many models on this point as I possibly can. These guys spread out. So if Magnus does come around, I still will potentially control this point. And then we have Sticky, Sticky, and Sticky. Abaddon's just kind of chilling back doing his shit. And these cultists came in from reserves on the bottom here in case I need to do investigate signals or anything like that. So this is after the charge. Uh, we make the charge. Magnus spends two CP to counter charge into me. Um, you can deny this, but I rolled, I was too close and I had to get everybody base to base. So if I rolled like a low, like a three, I could have charged this way. So that way I'm six inches away from Abaddon or this guy, Magnus, so he can't counter charge me. But since I rolled like a seven or an eight, I had to get base to base with as many models as I possibly could. Uh, and then he, I was within six inches so he counter charged me. So if you're ever trying to stay away from six inches for the counter charge, try to, just so you don't give him a free counter charge to get into combat. But now we're tying up Magnus uh, and we basically are about to kill this entire unit with our <laughs> rerolls at Curse Cultists. These two guys charged up here to try and finish off these two big guys. Uh, and then we're, again, we're slowly just bringing these uh, Curse Cultists back. So round three, he gets a uh, tempting target, secure no man's land, which I don't think he's going to do. So tempting target, I think I picked this one right here. 
because physically he couldn't get anybody to it. Like even if this guy fell back, he can't get there. If this guy fell back, he can't get there. If the one guy deep strikes, he can't get there. So I picked the one farthest away because if somehow he was able to kind of kill these guys off the table and control this, that would be one. And then I didn't want him to keep fighting me on this objective. So that would be the other one. So I picked the one farthest away from him for tempting target. And then obviously Shakur at no man's land, he's got to control uh, one in his home field and then one over here, which is also going to be tough for him to do. So we finished off that unit with the Chris Cultus. Magnus is still kind of just, I just ignored Magnus basically. I just ignored him. He kept shooting me and I kept bringing guys back. Uh, I get extend battle lines uh, and storm hostile objective. So I have to control objective that he controlled. Uh, and then at the start, at the end of your turn, if you control one or more objective markers in your own, so extend battle lines is one of the easiest ones to get. So we get the five there and then storm house that we have to control. I believe this back one that he had guys on. So we spend one CP to fall back with our Curse Cultus. So we spend one CP to fall back and then try and charge these guys over here to get uh, controlling that objective back there. These guys also fell back just so I don't keep giving them free attacks with this big uh, big beast right here. And then Sile's not good at killing vehicles. I found that out this game. If he charges in and, and tries to do anything to a vehicle, it's probably not gonna wound or do anything. So don't charge Sile into vehicles is what I, what I realized. Uh, all these guys are spread out for the four up and bone save. These guys are spread out for the four up and bone save. Abaddon started slowly going back in case I got extend battle lines uh, on my table edge. These guys are within 15 of the table edge so in case it gets to extend battle lines. Bikes came back in over here to try and just shoot some shots into the remaining unit that was down here. Nurgles uh, again moved out to try and block some of the movement over here. And I think we made our charge on his home field objective up here. So we took the home field objective for controlling for five points. Uh, we did attempting target, which I think was, I don't know, this one or something. Um, like it literally could have been any, any of them. Uh, we killed the beast with the forge fiend, shot the beast, killed the beast. And Magnus is still alive. So all he has left on the table, I believe, is Magnus which on his turn he gets secure no man's land and capture enemy outposts. So I get invested, he obviously couldn't do it. And then I get engaged in all fronts, which was easy. And then investigate signals, which finally we get. So uh, we get investigate here, investigate there, investigate there. And I think these guys backed up to investigate there. Uh, and then for Engage in all fronts. Obviously, we have all four quarters, so we're able to get that as well. So, bikes moved up, got this uh, objective. These guys uh, did investigate back there. Magnus is trying to take over this objective over here by just kind of killing Cultus. Uh, and then Abaddon moved back here to try and keep our home field, stay away from Magnus, and do investigate in the back corner there. So, that was the end. This is basically what we have dead. At the end of the game, we have uh, most of the yellow unit, most of the green unit, all of the red units still alive. A couple of cultists, one forge fiend, the seekers, and then unit of three nerglings uh, are dead. So this is the final game. Uh, T Suns finished up with 15 on primary. We kept them to 10 turn one, five turn uh, three, uh, and then zero on turn four, zero on turn five. So we had up 15. And then for secondaries, he had two turn one for investigate signals, six turn two, zero turn three, zero turn four, and then he got five on turn five. So 13 for secondaries, I felt really bad. Uh, so we finished up with 28. We don't do paint scores until the very end. So 28 for primary, and then we finished up with 15, 15, 15, 15, uh, which is 40 for primary, and then or 50 for primary. And then we had uh, five for turn one, 10 for turn two, eight for turn three, 10 for turn four, and then 10 for turn five. So 10, 20, 30, 43, for secondaries, which max is 40. So we finished up with 90 to 28 against Sean and his uh, thousand sons. So this is the end board state. Uh, these guys are just fucking spread all the way out. Bikes, Cultus, Cultus, Nerglings, Forge Fiend, Sile, Abby, and those guys. So, and the Magnus was kind of there because he finished off the rest of these uh, two guys. So great game, Sean. Thanks for everything. Uh, and then I took a, a picture of how far you can actually spread out with the Acurus Cultus because you have to have everybody within three inches of each or two inches of each other. So one model has to be within two inches. So if you triangle out on the edge here, this model's within two inches, this model's within two inches, this model's within two inches, this guy's within two inches of two people. 
uh, and then you basically chain it out. So this guy's within two inches of two, two people, two people, two people, two people, two people, two people. And then you have the triangle with all the big guys at the front here. So if Abby is where he was in the beginning of the game, which is on the other side of this wall, and then this guy's within six inches of Abby, this entire fucking chain can be, uh, <laughs> Out that far and still get the four up in Bonze, which is just nuts. Imagine that with another unit as well. Now, if somebody dies, uh, we're probably going to remove them over here because there's more people tied up over here. But if you don't chain it out correctly, then let's say you, they kill all of these guys, you basically have to kill everybody to get back into coherency of seven models, I believe. Six models, six models. So basically you have one, two, three, four, which is the dark commune, five, six. So basically I would still have a Chris Cultist technically alive, but all of these guys would die uh, automatically in the command phase or at the end of the turn, they die. So he would have to kill all of these guys, which have a four up in bone save and a six up feeling of pain before we have to remove, you know, these guys to lead up to the, the six models. So you have seven models, you have to be in triangles. If you have six models, you're fine. So that is just a picture to show you exactly uh, what we got. The next game coming up, game number two is going to be against another Thousand Suns player. Uh, so hopefully you learned what the list does and what Thousand Suns. I, it couldn't really show off the advantages of a Thousand Suns because we had a lot of counters to it. Uh, but he was able to kind of zip around and do a lot of long range psychic powers. Uh, and Magnus ignored a lot of shots, a lot of damage. Uh, so once he started doing that, I just said, fuck Magnus, I'm not going to go after him. Uh, the next game, we did try and go after Magnus. So you'll see a lot more of what Magnus can do in the, in the second game. But stay tuned for that. If you guys want these videos first, head over to Patreon. Uh, and support the channel if you guys like these types of videos leave in the comments below what you like didn't like and how we can improve on the channel we hit 5,000 subscribers so thank you guys on youtube uh and guys appreciate it thanks for clicking on the video and we'll see you in the next video game two of this uh three no victory at the rtt What's up my Patreon? So thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you guys are new here, there's so much content coming up on Patreon. Uh, we're going to continue to grow the channel. We got other dirtbags joining the channel to make a huge camaraderie dirtbag nation uh, for you guys up on the Patreon. We have other factions joining the, the dirtbags as well. It's not just going to be specifically four factions that we play all the time. We are really good at those four factions, but we have other really good players joining the dirtbags and we really want to grow the channel as much as possible. And it really is all thanks to the support from you guys donating, getting competitive dirtbags, the grandmasters, all of you guys are just, thank you so much. Uh, this video is really just made to give thanks to you guys who are either joining as you're watching this video or have joined over the past couple months. Uh, you guys have seen me live at tournaments and GTs and even have flown out uh, and, and met me, uh, Cooper, to basically just hang out with us all weekend. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. More is going to grow from the channel in 2024, uh, and I just can't wait to grow the Dirtbag Nation as much as we possibly can. So again, thank you so much. And uh, appreciate you joining the Dirtbag Nation.